everyone, I'm Bevan Fletcher, senior reporter for CED Magazine, and we're here at the Cable Tech Expo in Denver, and I'm with Glenn Califati from the Cable MSO Practice Lead with Sienna, and we're here to talk about fiber deep and what it means for cable. Thanks for being with us today, Glenn. Thanks for having me. Okay, so to start off, what do you think some of the drivers behind cable operators deciding to make the investment and take a fiber deep approach are? Well, uh, it, 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 interesting, when you, if you think about uh, you know, cable technology, it's been around a long time, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, they've done a lot with it over the last, uh, boy, you say 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. The technology's been evolving. Um, they've been adding services, adding capabilities. Um, and you know, the, the, the investment that they're, they're making in Fiber Deep now is actually a, a, a way to improve or, or be able to create agility to create new services and products mm -hmm. uh, faster and to make their, their customers happier and, and actually uh, you know, drive into to new markets. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so with the advent of 4K and the proliferation of OTT services, kind of how have consumers' expectations and behaviors shifted and how can cable operators adapt to this? Well, uh, boy, that's, that, that's a lot of good questions. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, hey, look, 4K. If you if you think of the experience uh, of, of 4K, if you if you see 4K video in its uh, native form, it's amazing. You you don't realize uh, how much color and depth um, that, that that's actually added to the experience. Uh, and you know, consumers want that. Uh, people are, are are purchasing televisions, purchasing technology. Uh, we all want that that display on our phone. That's right. uh, the richest, the deepest. Uh, we want that big, you know, 60, 70 inch display mm -hmm. at home. Um, you know, so you, you, cable needs to be able to deliver, you know, video, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that, that you can't see flaws. It's gotta, it's gotta be flawless, especially when it's displayed on, on such an incredible technology. Um, over the top is, a, is another, you know, big change, you know, to the mm -hmm. world as well. Uh, you know, if you think of uh, the behavior of, of people, you know, uh, 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 once upon a time you, you wait for a show to, to debut and be ready at that certain time. Uh, everyone's adapted to now being able to, uh, hey, I'm gonna binge watch. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch it when I want to on my schedule. And I'm gonna watch it on that, that really high definition dis you know, display. Um, so they, they expect, you know, the, the, the way it's done is actually different than it's ever been done before, which is uh, on the consumer's time frame, not necessarily the uh, content owner or the broadcasters. Right, that makes sense. So. With that said, would you say broadband is still king when it comes to cable operators' ability to monetize services? Yeah, well, broadband is uh, is, is, so, is so important, more important than ever. Um, if you think over the top is happening, you know, via the broadband service that they're offering, uh, it's a strange double-edged sword, you know, for the cable operator. Um, it's causing competition to the linear video program lineups that they have. Um, there's different technologies that they, you know, you're, they're able to actually, you know, cache the content a little bit differently mm -hmm. onto, you know, uh, like Roku type technologies, right. onto video game platforms, uh, which actually enables them to uh, raise the quality of the video, not have to compress it as much. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cable's got an interesting, uh, interesting, you know, world ahead of them right now uh, when it comes to their broadband product. It, it cannot be the weakest link. In, in the over-the-top service you know, experience right. or, or else their customers will complain. So it's a, it's a real big deal mm -hmm. uh, for, for the cable um, companies out there. Okay, great. So what kind of impact does Going Fiber Deep have on quality ex of experience for customers? Okay, well, uh, you know, uh, quality of experience is, a, is a, a, a very key metric. It's become, um, uh, you, you hear it more and more uh, from the perspective of the end user, mm -hmm. so the people that are consuming video or, or an over-the-top product. Um, and, and the people that are paying the most attention to it are the people that own content and are publishing content and distributing it on cable networks or via over-the-top or even on satellite, mm -hmm. right? Um, if people change the channel and tune away you know, from the content, mm -hmm. they don't get paid for the advertising, uh, the subscribers will churn out and, and may even change to another provider. Right. Um, so quality of experience is a, is a key metric you know, for cable to consider you know, uh, you know, as they face competition from over the top uh, or they're delivering certain new over the top type services uh, you know, to their customer base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what about scalability? Is that a challenge and how can operators adapt, overcome this? Well, I, I think uh, you know, uh, Fiber Deep helps uh, a scalability problem mm -hmm. for, for, for cable you know, quite a bit. Um, 
what it does is it actually you know takes away a lot of these active electronics mm -hmm. that would uh, normally be in, in in the path of the signal flow to the consumer okay. um, and you know I know that sounds like a lot but you know the, the cable cable guys will know this even better than I uh, you know I do but you know if you have a broadband type technology like a, like a data center technology mm -hmm. like Ethernet right. that's pushed really close to the consumer, um, and you can turn new features and new services and maybe even open up the, uh, the, the uh, what do they call the encoding or the, the bandwidth that you, you need to make the video quality better. Mm -hmm. And you can do that on the fly. Um, things like Fire Deep help you, know, you, you have that adaptability because you're using a common technology. You're taking a lot of a, an older legacy platform out of the way. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you think that cable operators have an advantage when it comes to these long-term fiber investments? Oh, oh, it's a big advantage. If you think of, um, you know, where, where's the best uh, place to, to put your money, right? If you're, you're, uh, you're a cable operator and you're, you're going to, you know, spend your capital, you know, on your network, you want to, you know, put, put that money into an asset like fiber optic, right? Mm -hmm. Fiber optic cable in more places means that uh, your, your company actually has more value. Mm -hmm. um, and you think of the future of wireless technologies and, and you know, that's not going away and that's going to even be you know, play a, a more of a vital role for cable in the future. Um, having fiber in the right places is just going to help them jump into those lines of business or provide you know, new you know, wireless based services to consumers. Right, yeah, you can't, kind of going off that with 5G on the horizon, um, how do these fiber deployments set up, set the stage for future technologies, kind of like what we were just discussing? Yeah, they do. I mean, it's, 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 it's having, you, eventually, I mean, it, it's funny, you, you, all wireless everywhere is a hard thing, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to pull off. So you need, you know, some point a network to, to take that, that, you know, that mobile experience and put it on a network to, mm -hmm. to connect you to the data center or to, to whatever you're consuming or, or accessing, right? Whether it's your social media app or, or some streaming content you might want to want to watch. So the more fiber cable uh, puts into the ground in the right places, lets them, uh, you know, have a, a, a great path into, uh, into like a, a mobile, you know, service. Mm -hmm. right? And so how fast or how rapidly do you think we'll see this transition and fiber deep deployments happening? Like what kind of changes need to be undertaken? Well, there's uh, there's probably a bunch of headwinds uh, that are affecting uh, that you know that 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 question. Uh, there's still debate about the technology and the implement, implementation of the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 digital fiber node market itself, um, and I'm sure on the show you know we'll hear you know from some of the vendors that, mm -hmm. that specifically make that technology. Uh, they they're still you know working on a, hey what's the the right standard you know mm -hmm. uh, the, for, you know for this to communicate with the legacy. Uh, you know, hybrid fiber co-op X network or analog assets. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I, I think it's a it's an interesting time. It's a, it depends on on what is adopted, uh, which players or providers or cable operators adopt which technology, and how fast they can tool their operations to actually drive into it. Because now, think about as a business, they're introducing new technology into the way they they you know deploy mm -hmm. services. They're going to have to. You know, buy, source, test. You know, uh, deliver, teach their staff how to how to install and maintain it. Make sure it works with the back office systems. So that's why I said there's a lot of headwinds. Right. Um, some of the companies are very aggressive in talking about trials and implementations this year. Uh, uh, if it's successful, it it will take off quick. We are expecting over the next few years for this to to grow very rapidly. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Glenn. And We'll keep an eye out for future developments. Great, thank you for having me. Thanks.